Yes, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Wallinho channel and welcome to the Chelsea versus Newcastle match review as Chelsea managed to beat the Toon Army at Stamford Bridge today and achieve a 2-1 win. Climbing us back up the Premier League table, we now sit in 5th place, 1 point behind Aston Villa and it's all thanks, if we're being completely honest, to Cole freaking Palmer. Cole Palmer put in an absolute shift once again today. Honestly, close to a 10 out of 10 performance. He was unreal. Everything he touches turns to cold. And honestly, he was so good, bro. Nicholas Jackson, I have to give him his praise as well. Although we did not give him the service that he deserved throughout the entirety of the game, when the opportunity came to him, he put it away. And I'm not going to lie, when Pedro Neto squared that ball across the box to him, I was low-key thinking, oh, I think Jackson might miss. I think Jackson might miss, and I think that might be the PTSD of last season kicking in, because he would miss those chances under Poch last year. Honestly, he would. But this year, he just has more confidence and more assurance in what he's doing. He seems so much more secure in his finishing technique. He's attacking the ball now, and it's paying dividends, man. His sixth goal in the Premier League so far this season, I'm so happy for Nico Jack. And, and yeah, man, I'm buzzing for the 2-1 win. And let's just go over everything leading up to the game, my reaction to the lineup, what I expected to happen once I saw the lineup, and then my reaction to everything that happened in this beautiful 2-1 win. Let's do it, guys. Okay, so little context from last night because this has to do with the manner in which I watched the game. So last night, I went out with my friends, and we went out to see the movie Smile 2 by, which, by the way, if you guys haven't seen that movie god damn bro that was probably the most scary movie i've ever seen and on the on the drive back i mean it was like 12 30 a.m i had just dropped my friend off i was i was seeing things and if you if you saw the movie you know it's all about seeing things and your mind playing tricks on you so i highly recommend that movie but that's the reason why i got back very late last night and you know what i'm committed to watching chelsea games i want to pump out good successful reviews to you guys so you guys enjoy the game just as much as i do and listen the 7 a.m alarm was on this is the time i watched the game over here in the u.s and i was ready to watch my chels man despite being scared but let's let's forget that that movie for right now because this is a chelsea video listen i got up at 7 a.m turned the game on on my phone and i was just watching it in bed like half asleep but i was there watching it guys so i best believe i paid 100 percent attention to the game listen on to the lineup let me stop yapping. So the lineup, we came out in the 4-2-3-1. I think it was a pretty uh, predictable lineup, except for one thing. And this one thing is obviously Reese James at left back. Now, we knew Reese James was going to start, but I thought Malagusto was going to be on the bench and Cucurea was going to be the left back. I think everyone in the Chelsea fan base predicted the lineup to be Sanchez, Reese James, Fofana, Colwell, Cucurea, Lavia, Caicedo, Palmer, Madueke, and then possibly Mikhailo Mudrik on the left, and then Nicholas Jackson up top. And there were two changes from that. Pedro Neto was brought on to the left wing, where we had two players that were not playing on their natural side, which was pretty interesting to see. It actually was a combination that worked quite well, though, funnily enough, by Enzo Maresca Neto, and then Reese James right behind him. Um, and then Madueke and Gusto did the job on the right wing. Now, I actually agree with Enzo Maresca. For, for some odd reason, this did seem to work for us. And although it did seem very unorthodox, like my first reaction to it when I saw it on Google, the team sheet, I was like, what the hell? Why? Why? There must be some specific reason. There must be something he's trying to exploit in Newcastle's system that gives him a reason to start Reese James at left back. And I think that might have been something with their midfield Reese James receiving on his right foot, maybe opened up the passing lanes for Nicholas Jackson to be fed those through balls in behind the defense, those looping passes. And we did see it a couple of times from Reese James, but that's that's kind of my thought process behind why he was selected in the left back role. Also his leadership as well. You just do have to play your club captain when he is available. But let me know what you guys think. Why was Reese James starting at left back? Did you guys see something different from me? I, I genuinely want to know. No. Besides that, the game kicked off. The game kicked off and Chelsea were on the front foot right away. Chelsea were on the front foot right away. Listen, 
first five minutes, we know we start game strong and we know we start the second half of game strong as well. And that's exactly what happened. Within the first five minutes, Nicholas Jackson, lovely turn in and around the midfield area, slips in Cole Palmer, who time just run to perfection in my opinion. And he's through on goal, slots it into the bottom right corner, and Chelsea have the lead right away. Cole Palmer, we know he doesn't forgive, and he finishes his chances. He finishes his dinner all the time. And I was buzzing, man. I was like, okay, it's this type of day. It's a it's a Brighton versus Chelsea, a West Ham versus Chelsea type of day. We're starting off strong, already got the first goal quickly. This usually means that Chelsea are going to win the game. But it was disallowed for offside. And this was a very controversial offside, in my opinion. It was a very controversial offside because the margins are so fine, and there was only one camera angle given to the VAR. So I do heavily have to critique the VAR team because they didn't keep that sort of consistency of the VAR camera angles and their decision making throughout the entire game. Because Alexander Isak's goal was very similar in terms of how close it was to being offside or not offside. And right there, they gave them like three multiple camera angles for them to take a look at to kind of prove to themselves, okay, this might be a goal that we're going to allow Isak to go ahead and get. And then for Cole Palmer, it was like, this is the only camera angle, whether or not you like it, it, he looks offside in this camera angle by just a tad bit. So we're going to stick with that. But with Isak's, they gave him the benefit of the doubt with like multiple camera angles. So I would just like a little more consistency in that. But besides that fact, I thought the referee was like a 7, 8 out of 10 today. Not too bad. Listen, after that, in the 11th minute, uh, the ball was played in behind to Newcastle's forward Alexander Isak. And Wesley Fofana committed. It was a 50-50. He committed with everything. And then you could just see him right away. He tackles the hell out of Isak or Harvey Barnes, whoever it was. And then he just goes to the ground and grabs that left knee right away. And at this point, I'm like, oh, shit, bro. Oh, shit. I think Wesley Fofana re-injured his his ACL. And I was like, oh, no, this does not look good. He looked in pretty bad pain at first. And then it kind of seemed to wear off after that. He was given the yellow card. But he was on the floor like like in in absolute agony. In agony? No, not in agony. How can I say it? He was in, in absolute, like... A state of lowered emotions, a state of just giving up, man. He seemed like he gave up on himself. He was like, you know what, another big injury? Are you kidding me? That was kind of like the feeling I got from his reaction to that play. He was holding that knee. The physios came on. They they double wrapped him like a freaking mummy around that knee. And he stepped off the pitch. I was like, damn, I think that's the end of Wesley Fofana's Chelsea career right there. Because two big injuries plus the broken leg that he had at Leicester City. I mean, this guy had only played like five pre- Premier League games previously for us before this. So it was very sad to see that happen. But he came off the pitch. He came back on. And I was like, okay, was he going his back? It, he was still hobbling around, kind of limping. But after that, he played a pretty decent game. So good on Wesley Fofana. Hopefully everything is okay. We'll keep our fingers crossed because I do want him to keep getting consistent playing time. He's only going to get better and better. But yeah, injury scare. Hopefully it's not too bad from now on. He played the whole 90 minutes. He was pretty decent. Now, in the 16th minute was when something crazy happened. So the ball was played through in behind to Barnes. He was literally making a defense splitting run. It was a beautiful pass by, I believe, Tonali. And he's literally through on goal, inside the box, no pressure around him, running through the traffic where the ball is played, 1v1 against Sanchez. Levi Cowell recognizes this right away and trips him literally millimeters outside of the box. If this was in the box, it would have gone to VAR, and there would have been a straight penalty, possibly a red card. So Levi Cowell and and uh, Robert Sanchez especially, and at times Wesley Fofana showed a lack of maturity, and this almost cost us several times in this game. And listen, this is the weak point in our team, and every team tries to exploit this. They know that... Scoring against Chelsea is not a difficult thing to do. You don't have to work very hard to score against Chelsea. And we saw this multiple times in the game. And we'll touch upon that in just a little bit as well. But that chance by Colwell that he cut off Harvey Barnes was very, very scary to see. But we got away with it because it wasn't in the box. It didn't go to VAR. But yeah, in the 18th minute, this was where the bit of magic from Cold Palmer himself came out. I mean, he receives the ball. Facing our own goal in our own third of our half. And then he turns. 
He knows exactly where Pedro Neto is. He knows exactly the type of run that Pedro Neto is going to make. He barely has to look up, and he just sprays a beautiful ball in between the lines, splitting the defense, and Pedro Neto is gone on a 50-50. Who's going to get there first? Pedro Neto or Fabian Schar? He chips that ball over Fabian Schar. He commits on the slide tackle. All of a sudden, it's all or nothing. Pedro Neto just has to square the ball across the box to Nico Jackson, who... If he keeps up his form of this season, can tap it in. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, that goal was rock and roll football. It reminded me of the goal that Nico scored against Crystal Palace. Three passes were in behind and we score a goal. Literally just like that. The game has changed. We flipped the switch and Chelsea is 1-0 up. Stamford Bridge went crazy. I mean, it was such an exciting goal. That's that's typical Chelsea right there. One, two passes, quick on the counter, catch them on the break, and then we score a goal. Typical Chelsea, it was beautiful to see, man. Beautiful football. I just had to clap when I saw that, bro. I was in my bed. I was like, what a freaking goal by Chelsea. That was absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, 1-0 up. Sixth goal of the season for Nicholas Jackson. Proving the doubters wrong, including myself. Fair play to Nico, man. So happy for him. Honestly, unbelievable. And yeah, from there, we thought once again as Chelsea fans, okay, now it's going to kick off. And literally like one, two plays after that, Newcastle... Fed a through ball to Almiron. He took a beautiful touch onto his left foot, snuck in behind the defense, and it was literally an open shot against Sanchez, and he scuffed it. And I'm sure True Jordy was freaking fuming with that missed chance because they could have equalized literally right away after we had scored, which is such a disappointing thing to see. We just switch off after we score goals, and it's it's very, very infuriating to see as Chelsea fans. And I'm sure you guys agree with that feeling as well. It just seems like we can't manage results. And we just expect to outscore the team to get results this season. So, unfortunately, that is the truth. On from there, Newcastle, honestly, were a little more dominant. They started controlling the game. Uh, Robert Sanchez, my goodness. This guy has to be dropped, man. Every other player that hasn't performed in one game has been dropped by Enzo Maresca. And then Robert Sanchez, week after week, makes so many misplaced passes i mean there was an instance in the first half where he misplaced a throw to his teammate he tossed the ball underhand and he threw it literally to the other team i mean this guy's not even good at using his hands and he's a goalkeeper how can we have trust in him and listen this guy made so many mistakes so many uh occasions in which his distribution was piss poor he just gave the ball away to the other team and we should have been punished a team more clinical than them would have put three, four goals away against us, if we're being completely honest today. And this is all down to Robert Sanchez and his shit performance, bro. It was so bad. But nevertheless, Newcastle controlled the game a little bit more in that first half. Uh, they did manage to play through us. After they started their play on a throw-in in their half, they absolutely overran our midfield. Lavia and Caicedo way too easily dribbled past by Bruno Guimaraes and by Livermento, the ball eventually made its way onto the left-hand side. Lewis Hall and Harvey Barnes on a 2v1 against Gusto. They slip Lewis Hall down the wing. He squares it across to Alexander Isak, and it's literally the easiest tap-in of his freaking life. It seems like these teams just do not have to work at all to score against Chelsea, and it was so disappointing to concede in this fashion. Uh, I, I saw it coming, honestly. I mean, our defense is so, so bad. We do have young talent in there that has potential, but it's just not a cohesive unit whatsoever. We definitely need to add some experience in there and get rid of this horrible goalkeeper. But yeah, halftime was there. 1-1. One, one. Listen, it was disappointing, but we all know Chelsea come out strong in the second half, and that's exactly what we did. Literally two minutes after Enzo Maresca's probably insane halftime team talk that he always does to get us up and firing. Fair play to Enzo, man. He always gets us going in the first minutes of the second half. We get our second goal of the game to give us the lead. Isak, poor control, poor distribution play on the holdup at half field. And then Romeo Lavia tackles the ball away from him. And it counts as an assist because Cole Palmer dribbled the ball for like 35 yards. Fabian Schar kept backing up. He pretty much invited him to shoot. I don't know why. It's literally Cole Palmer. Shoots first post, sneaks it past uh, Nick Pope. And 2-1. He does a cheeky celebration. Chelsea are up 2-1. And we think, okay, can we get a third goal now? Can we keep on the attack? Can we manage the game? 
No, can we prevent this from being a Heart Attack FC game? No, because this is Heart Attack FC. We need to give everyone a heart attack that's a Chelsea fan. That's exactly what happened, man. Newcastle once again dominated, and I don't think we got past our own halfway line for literally like 25 minutes. It was just utter onslaught by Newcastle United. I mean, Reese James had to save our ass multiple times in clearing the ball off the line making last ditch headers, last ditch tackles, blocking crosses. This guy was everywhere. He was looking like N'Golo Kante at right back, bro. But Reese James seems like he's gotten his defensive positioning back. He's more up to the speed of play. I it was only going to take a couple of games to kind of get that rhythm back, especially on the defensive side of the game. He was out for so long. It was expected against Liverpool that he wasn't going to be the most sharp in terms of his decision making but today he was absolutely phenomenal for us and i'm very proud to say that reese james is back at least for one more game but yeah uh from there we had to substitute we had to make some some changes in the team it just seemed like we had lost our spark we were allowing too much pressure from newcastle and it was the right moment for enzo mariska to make this change and uh jackson stopped getting service and this is when he decided to take off Noni Madueke. And I think this was the correct decision. I think Noni Madueke didn't have his best of games today. He wasn't very impactful at all. Uh, didn't really create chances. Didn't really create opportunities. Was kind of locked down by Lewis Hall. He got the better end of the stick of him. And it just wasn't Noni's day. Listen, the change of Mudrik, it was his opportunity. He got his opportunity that he deserved after his great performance uh, in the Conference League a couple of days ago against Panathinaikos, obviously getting two assists and one goal. Great job for Mudrik. This was his chance to shine. This was Mudrik's opportunity to show Enzo Maresca why he deserves more minutes in the Premier League. And although he did create a couple chances in the game, I do wish he had more of an impact. I do wish Mikhailo Mudrik kind of took the game by the scruff of the neck, if you understand what I'm saying, and just freaking attack the players, man. I wish he was as direct as Donny Madueke because he has all the capabilities to beat basically most right backs in the world, but he just seems to second guess himself so much. And it sucks to see because Mudrik is a guy that I, and I'm sure all Chelsea fans for the most part, want to see succeed. And he had his shot. He had his opportunity. Palmer and Nkunku, cheeky little one-twos up the pitch, squared it across to Mudrik in the box. And then the lack of quality, the lack of basic footballing skills at the top level showed themselves once again mudrik took a poor touch the ball stuck under his feet he's in the box with time and space and he touches it onto his left foot literally in front of the goal he touches it onto his weaker foot smashes the ball right at nick pope when he could have took a better touch kept his composure and kept the whole frame of the goal open if he played it onto his right foot but that just goes to show mudrik unfortunately still has a lot of work to do in terms of mastering those basics that top wingers have in world football but yeah from there uh enzo came on for romeo lavia obviously maresca felt that needed to do a bit of damage control lavia we don't want him to get re-injured as we know how freaking injury prone this guy is he was impeccable today so was caicedo caicedo was unbelievable today once again very proud with their performances um and from there enzo came on and it did look a bit shaky i'm not gonna lie enzo fernandez I don't know what it is, man. Something, something is wrong with this guy. Is it the position? Is it the role he's being asked to play? I think it is. We just looked a lot more secure with Lavia and Caicedo in the middle. We seem to concede more chances with Enzo on the pitch. But we do also seem to be and have more of a creative spark going forward. So it's a give and take. What do you want? Would you prefer the defensive cover and less attacking spark from the midfield? Or would you prefer the more control of the ball with Enzo that he gives us? And the more distribution towards the front players that he has. And then lack heavily in the defensive end of the pitch. It's whatever you guys prefer, honestly. I prefer having that defensive cover with Lavia, if I'm being honest. But yeah, from there, uh, Livermento. In the 75th minute, a couple of minutes after we made our subs, he has time and space to pick out a through ball to Alexander Isak. And everyone knows this is the pass he's going to pick through in behind. Everyone knows it. Everyone could see it. He's the only player literally... In and amongst the Chelsea defense, the back four were solid. They were positioned well. But then no one picks up Isak. Colwell and Fofana, they they give him a red, they lay out a red carpet and he just walks through. He runs through and behind, unmarked. And all of a sudden, our horrible defense, and it's a 1v1 against Robert Sanchez. 
And this guy, Alexander Isak and Sanchez, made the most unorthodox decisions I have seen in a game in a long time because Isak, instead of shooting the ball, goes around Robert Sanchez, who was sitting down on the floor already. I don't know why. He was sitting down on the floor, but he forced him wide somehow. And then Isak, instead of just squaring the ball to his teammate, who was wide open for a tap-in, decides to keep dribbling towards the goal, does a step over for no reason, and then Caicedo has enough time to sprint his ass back and cover this shocking defense that we have and poke it out for a corner. And if I'm a Newcastle watching that, I'm fuming, bro. I'm livid at that because it's such a waste. And with the player that has the quality that Isak has, I mean, I'm freaking raging at that, man. It's so disappointing. Newcastle had several opportunities to at least get a draw out of this game. I'm sure Eddie Howe is very, very disappointed because... It didn't seem like Newcastle's game plan was bad. It seemed like it was a lack of effort and desire from the players that cost Newcastle today. And the effort and desire that the substitutes from Chelsea came on and and gave to the team honestly kind of made a difference. Enzo Fernandez, although him and Mudrik didn't really impose themselves on the game like we wish they would have, they did show a lot of desire. And the guy that, in my opinion, showed the most desire and lit up a spark for Chelsea in that second half was Christopher Nkunku. He came on in, I believe, the 78th minute along with Kukureya, who came on for Gusto. And from there, Chelsea were on it again. Chelsea, something lit up a fire under their backside. And we were firing, bro. We were playing balls in behind to Nkunku. He was hesitating to shoot, funnily enough, even though he's a top finisher. But he was making beautiful runs. He was pressing the hell out of that defense. And he was linking up very well with Cole Palmer, with Mudrik, with uh, who was on that right-hand side, with Pedro Neto, who was unbelievable today as well. Top performance. Definitely earns his starting spot for the next game we have in the Premier League, at least. And and yeah, uh, it came down to Nkunku winning a penalty. It wasn't a penalty, guys. Dan Byrne barely grabbed his shoulder, and he fell down very easily. And from there, listen, Newcastle got a couple free kicks in our half, but we managed to scrape the win. The three points are ours. And listen, positive result. We need to build upon this. I'm very pleased with the result. As long as we get the three points, I don't care how many goals we concede. I don't care how many chances we miss. As long as we get the three points, everyone is happy. And it gives the team some sort of confidence to build upon this result and go into the tough run of fixtures that we have up next. I thought, honestly, our best player on the pitch today was Cole Palmer, but I have to tip my hat to Reese James. He was so good. Pedro Neto was solid. Uh, Caicedo and and Lavia were very good as well, and Kunku had a good impact off the bench, and obviously Nico Jackson finished what he needed to finish, got only one or two opportunities the whole game, but listen, just like in the Liverpool game, you score those chances, you're always in the game. So very pleased with the majority of the team. Um... The outliers like Robert Sanchez and the immature moments of Colwell and, and Fofana can be fixed. But Robert Sanchez needs to be dropped. I don't want to see him play for Chelsea ever again. Uh, Philip Jorgensen has to play in the next game. 100%. But yeah. That's it for today's match review, guys. Let me know what you guys thought of the game. I'm I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased. Uh, I'll probably catch the last minutes of the Arsenal game right now that's going on. I don't know what... The score is, let's go ahead and check it, because we are in fifth place right now, just behind Aston Villa. And Man United obviously lost to to Newcastle, to West Ham. Let's all laugh at Man United. (laughs) And then uh, Tottenham lost to Crystal Palace. So favorable results for us in terms of the standings. We're back in there. Listen, if it stays 2-1 to Arsenal right now, we're only three points behind them, four points behind Liverpool, and six points behind City. If you told me we'd be kind of in and around the top four at the beginning of the season... I would have bit off your hand for that. So listen, let's keep the momentum going. Let's keep praising Enzo Maresca, backing him because his decisions seem to be paying off game after game. And yeah, let's go, boys. Let's keep making this run. And I'll see you guys for the lead up to the Newcastle versus Chelsea game in Tyneside as we play them in the next round of the Carabao Cup. But yeah, take care, guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.